I love you. Welcome back to the Couch Potatoes. Plenty of room. Have yourself a seat. The stains are okay. Don't worry about it. We mentioned it before. I'm the Green Traveler from <laughs> Gorsh. <laughs> I wish you would really stop mentioning the stains. Um, I can't. It's your fault. Man. I can't water bend, so I can't get that out. But well, that's what created the stains. If I do remember, <laughs> water bending. <laughs> I'm a form. <laughs> this is a podcast not about the stains. It's about green and faceless on the couch. And it's called Movies and TV. We're just talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Movies and TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, might, that might help us get found on the internet more. <laughs> <laughs> movies and TV. <laughs> uh, a like podcast the name, about... <laughs> anytime somebody searches it. <laughs> podcast about two government conspiracy creatures. Uh, that would be hilarious. Yeah, so we're here talking about the new Avatar. Mm -hmm. The Last Airbender. The Last not, Airbender. Not, not Avatar 2, but Avatar The Last no, Airbender. No. The yeah, not The Way of action. the Water, or whatever that was called. Um, not M. Night Shyamalan's live action adaptation. No. Um, someday no. I would love to talk about that. I but... thought we were going to talk about all of it. I thought we were going to talk about all of it, but maybe someday we'll do I, that. And Maybe someday. I, I haven't watched... Okay, so this is going to give me a lot of backlash on the internet, okay, and I know that. Okay. Um, I haven't watched all of the animation. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Back in college, I'm, you know, we moved in with uh, our good friend, Professor Ron Vald the Scald. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Avatar master. He's a maestro. He knows... Sure. He knows a lot. He sure. loves this show. I love um, it, too. It's I mean, good. We probably... We probably, I mean, I know you did, yeah. but I mean, like, we probably could have had him on, and it could have just been you two talking about it for a whole five That's hours. That's true. Not five. We but I had, I didn't grow hours. up on this show. This wasn't, this wasn't something um, I watched as a kid, and then when I came to college, I was like, you know what? I want to watch it. I've always wanted to. I just never did. And so I watched the first book, and then I watched, I think, half of the second book. And I just stopped, and I don't know why. Right. And then this happens. show started coming out. I, I think what happened was I watched the final fight because I was just like, oh, man, I want to, you know, I was getting excited, and I was just mm. like, man, I just can't wait to see him when, when he's fully in his element. <laughs> and I watched the final fight and was like, that was so fucking cool. <laughs> I don't need to watch the rest of the show now. Like Awful. That's just the worst. I know. Yeah, it's like a peak at the end and was like, that was so satisfying. I don't need to read the rest of the book. Um, it's like, it's, but then the, the, it's like you like just had the perfect date, just the perfect date. And then they're like, they agree to have intercourse with you and then just immediately. Why's that gotta be your end all? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, they say that, I'm just saying that's where it goes to. And so, right. But you, you know, you're like, oh, that's okay. I already came. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of sex talk in the last four minutes of this beginning of this episode about a isn't that how we start off most every television series yeah. I mean, uh, that's most of our disney playlist yeah <laughs> maybe there's something wrong with us but but <laughs> no definitely there's definitely something wrong with us something wrong with you um, um but <laughs> but no then this live action uh version start came was like coming out and i knew about it for you know we i don't know we knew yeah, about it for like for a year a while, or so in yeah. advance maybe yeah and i had all that time to rewatch the animation and then it was two months until the the live action was coming out and i was like oh shit i haven't <laughs> tried to watch the animation at all i'm gonna try to do that and I've gotten back to where I originally stopped watching. Uh-huh. And I have yet to watch further. I don't know why. I don't okay. know what's wrong with what's, me. What's I just, the episode I, I you suck left at watching TV on. shows. What's the episode you left off? I don't on? know, man. It's been four weeks. <laughs> I I just watched the entirety of the series like uh, I know. <laughs> a week and a half ago. And <laughs> 
I can tell you. I can't binge like you people. <laughs> I can tell you if, like, if you if you remember what was going on, I can tell you if it if it's gonna pick up at at what point. Well, that's the problem. Is it? It wasn't because of when it was going down. Oh, I just stopped watching. Yeah, I, it, it's but just the me thing. It's you just did like it again. I came back from. Yeah, I came back from work one day, and I was like, I'm going to watch... No, I don't want to watch that. I'm not really feeling it right now. You know what? I'm just going to watch Doctor Who or watch YouTube uh-huh. or like something else. I see. And then I did that for about three or four days, and then I was like, maybe I should go back. <sighs> no, it just feels like a chore now. You know, uh-huh. it's like I, too much time has passed, yeah. and now my OCD, ADHD brain is just like, nah, I can't work it back into the routine. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's they too- say previously on Avatar, and you know, they catch you. Up. Oh, I know, I can jump back in, no problem. That's that's not the problem. I I can always step in. The problem is my brain. I see. The, I see. <laughs> it's it's a me thing. It's it's just how I have always been with TV shows. Well, it's just like what's just what's just right now, right here. Why I have you on the couch? Let's let's make a little bit of homework for you, okay? So nope, you go you do that. You it's go, immediately gonna not happen. Well, you know, as soon as you pop that cork. You're going to be like, there's the same thing with, let the elements there's the same thing with Penny Dreadful. <laughs> the same thing with Penny Dreadful. You kept telling me, you got to watch it. I want you to watch it. You'll love it. And then uh, like two years this... after you kept trying to tell me to do it, I okay. finally watched it. I was right. like, you know what? That was great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the more people tell me to do it is the more well, my brain is, is going to be like, I don't have to do it from now. from your movie doctor. Okay. <laughs> I don't trust you. You don't have a face. <laughs> <laughs> but that series has two faces. I could say that. But you were tested on medically for most of your, your childhood That's why I know so much about medicine. And I think that if but you But you're just... also kind of like attracted to pushing it on others. You're like Christian Grey from, from Fifty Shades of Grey. What? You got tortured as a kid and now you're you're you get turned on by torturing others. I'm not torturing you. I'm telling you to watch a very good television series. You're prescribing me movie drugs. <laughs> It's only dopamine. You're going to be okay. <laughs> dopamine scares me. Okay. My preferred is depression and loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right. Well, too meta. Let's, too meta. let's do a quick synopsis of what happens in the live action series. The plot is basically the same as the first season. So, they're not called books anymore either. Oh, which, I mean, not. I guess I can understand. It's the ex- it's the exact same name. They need to have some way of sure. differentiate. Well, anyway, they focus on what happens in book one, season one of Avatar The Last Airbender. It's about 20-ish episodes of animation. Yeah, about somewhere in there. Uh, I was just trying to pull the, the year really quick. Oh, I think it was 2005. Yep, 2005 through 2008. So, you know, elementary school uh, into middle school for us. Even though the animation itself doesn't really have any cultural issues, any cultural issues can be chalked up to American creators. <laughs> 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 but honestly, I feel like the the animation is very... It's very good. good at, um, delivering its messages. Yes, and I don't... You know, I think that these characters in these stories are very obviously representing different cultures in our world Mm -hmm. but they are definitely different their own independent cultures and and they and the way that they interact is specific to this world it's not i i don't i i don't think they're trying to say anything with having the fire nation be kind of like more of japanese uh, and the Earth right. Nation more Chinese, and that the Japanese are invading the cha- Chinese. I don't, I don't think they're trying to say anything with that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't think so. Not really. Oh, I, me. I mean, one one minor, and it's not really an issue, but one minor issue with the animation that the live action surprisingly, I know a lot of people are going to be shocked to hear me say this. It does correct an issue 
mm. of the animation, and that's its casting. Right. The live action cast is almost entirely um, Asian actors or indigenous actors. Yes. And yeah. applause, ma- massive yeah. applause for that. Yeah. Like that's a great, um, I, great I representation agree there because they're definitely, like I said, representing specific cultures from our world so it mm-hmm. would just be it just doesn't feel right when you have a, a white european person up there <laughs> in uh anyway closing clothing yeah playing soccer. that's exactly what i'm getting at <laughs> oh man uh yeah i don't remember the m night that's the reason we're not talking to m night by the way for the people who are wondering about right oh, you should go into m night's movie i haven't watched that since it came out and that would we'll be so disingenuous to, to criticize a movie yeah someday i would love to rewatch it and give it give it our all and uh, just you know just poo poo it all over it oh we were but, uh, just talking about the announcement it was way back in 2008 that they announced that they were going to do a live action. Jesus. Yeah. Wait, wouldn't that have been the M Night movie? Two thousand eighteen. Oh, did oh, I say two thousand eight? Uh, I might have. No, you might have said eighteen, and I lost it in the uh, internet it, lag. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the editor will leave it in for your embarrassment, <laughs> or. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so, quick synopsis of what's going on: uh, the Avatar is a person who can control all four elements who which are usually only controlled by specific cultures in the world the uh, uh, north and southern water tribes uh, are typically where the waterbenders come from and uh, the fire nation is where firebenders come from and the earth kingdom is where earthbenders come from and at the time that we meet Aang, he is a part of one of the air nomad temples. However, he runs away after he learns he's supposed to be the Avatar. And the day he does so, the Fire Nation attacks all of the air temples and does genocide on his people. Yeah. So, uh, it's very awful. Yeah. Another thing is is that the Avatar manifests themselves in a certain nation depending on where they're at in the cycle. Yeah, it's it's very much like Doctor Who. It's like regeneration, uh, almost. Yeah. Not, not reincarn. It's more reincarnation than. Yeah, yeah, yeah because like a Doctor Who, it, I guess more like the Dalai Lama. It gets <laughs> it gets passed on to the next <laughs> next title, but like. <laughs> Uh, Doctor Who, it's like a whole new personality, but it's the same memories. And it's very similar with the Avatar. It, it rotates through the nations. Is it... It's air, water, earth, fire? That's right. That's, right. that's the rotation yeah, cycle? That's the rotation cycle. So, um, yeah. since Aang disappears and accidentally freezes himself... the what a dumbass. Yeah, the world believes that either the line of the avatars has been broken or the next one will be uh in the water tribe and is probably becoming quite old at this point but basically the, the avatar hasn't become a myth it has become a thing of the past and maybe a legend uh that zuko a uh, hundred years later, being banished is searching for it to redeem his honor. Uh, we can get more into that later, but I think we can at least say that Zuko is the prince Z- of yes, the Fire Nation. Of the Fire Nation, thank you. Uh, but Katara and her brother Sokka, they find Aang and wake him up uh, somehow, uh, along with his uh, flying bison, Appa, the best character, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they start adventuring together, trying to save the world from the invasion of the Fire Nation that has been taking place over the last 100 years. It becomes, it, you know, becomes their quest to get Aang trained and all of the elements so that he can overcome Fire Lord Ozai. That's right. 
uh, the the not guy Mark who is Hamill. currently leading the war. It's not Mark Hamill, but it's even better. Because, oh, no. Oh, come on. He's from <laughs> Lawson. He was one of my favorite characters. I do love him. I do love... Uh, why am I struggling to find his name? Daniel Day Kim. He's also in Hawaii Five O and a bunch of other uh, new shows. But it was kind of funny because as all these people were popping up, I was kind of just texting you and be like, oh my god, it's this guy from Lost. Oh my god, it's this guy from Lost. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you, you made the comment, it's just like, it's a nice little Lost reunion, you know? <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> but yeah, I do, I do like Daniel Day Kim as um fire lord ozai we'll get the villains out of the way first and then we'll talk about our heroes i guess but no like what makes it, like i think nobody can top mark hamill like there's two characters in the original animation that are just untoppable like you literally cannot go above and beyond their levels and that is fire lord ozai because mark hamill is easily like the best voice actor we've ever known like the man is a damn Probably genius true. his voices are superb yeah phenomenal villain like nobody like the joker is like one of the most iconic voices ever around the world like most yeah, people know the, like the joker's sure. voice yeah but also his his fire lord ozai though is just so like again i've only seen that fight but what little of his voice acting is in that fight is chilling yes <laughs> like he, he's he might be scary. more evil than the joker because at least the joker wants you to laugh yeah he's not co- committing well i guess the joker has committed genocide uh, somewhere yeah online. i'm pretty sure that <laughs> happened yeah he's yeah he probably <laughs> found like happened, there, found out there were sewer people and thought it would be funny to you know gas them and make them walk oh the streets gosh, yeah. and then fall over dead and, and then he's like gotcha yeah <laughs> but no, like Daniel Day Kim is still intimidating, but more like in a quiet manner. Like he he definitely seems like that scary, determined general who, like, you say one wrong thing, he's gonna chop your head off. Oh yeah. But like, I thought he did great. But, like he doesn't have that that cold menace that uh, that I got from the few like ten minutes that I've seen of Mark Hamill as. <laughs> as was I, <laughs> so maybe All he right. could build there. Maybe uh, by season yeah. three, Daniel Day Kim will be built there. Maybe. But it, oh, and the other character, since I mentioned it, is uh, General Iro, Uncle Iro. Oh like, yeah, animation Uncle Iro. He's amazing. Is a fucking angel. Yeah, he's like, fucking <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, but I do, I like both of the picks they made. Cast wise, yes. I feel like that I like the picks so well. I I think they were. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think they did a great job at casting. Paul Sun Hyung Lee plays Uncle Iroh in the live action. And while he does not reach the limit of the animation Iroh, yeah. he is damn good. Oh, he's really like, good. He, he, uh, animation is like a 10. He's like a 9.5. He, like, he um, you know, has a lot of compassion for his nephew, Uncle Iroh does. That nephew being Prince Zuku. Uh, and he also was supposed to be the fire lord but his brother will say managed to get on the fro- throne in a bloodless way <laughs> but zuko was banished and iro went with him to look after him and uh yeah yeah he, he's a good there's guy. a lot to there about i love uncle him. iro's like you know he's his past and how he treats zuko as his own son yeah. we won't get into it because of yeah. spoilers but like there, there's a beautiful past with Uncle Iroh that you you see where the this kind-hearted saint came from, right? You know, because because he wasn't always a kind-hearted saint. You know, he had he does have a bit of a dark past with with certain things that he sure, was forced to sure. do. Sure, one thing that they keep on uh, uh, referring to in this particular series is the fact that he laid siege to Ba Sing Se for like sixty days yes. or something like that. I can't remember. Maybe 90. Whatever. And Six years. <laughs> it was, you know, pretty bad because the the it's a big walled city and they couldn't get things from the outside in. And yeah, a lot yeah. of people died. But, you know, he also didn't succeed. So he uh, he gets he gets 
gruff from both sides. Was that how that expression yeah. goes? Yeah, I mean, he he failed his mission, but also like he he did evil. <laughs> yeah, he did do evil. He did like, do the evil. Yeah, th- there's Mars in his past, but you can see where this beautiful boy came from. Yes, and it's and I think Paul Sun Paul Sun Hyung Lee um, does an amazing job at uh, delivering that that emotion deep within. Yeah. Like, yeah. cause he, he, he definitely fucking cares, but at the same oh, time, yeah. he is just like the most jubilant guy ever. You know, you'll see something in a stream, like, Ooh, <laughs> what's this? <laughs> I got to check this new card out. Uh, see what this guy's selling. So Prince Zuko, we've missed in list. Uh, we've talked about a couple of times, uh, played by Dallas Liu. He, he does an excellent job as well and i love his relationship with uh iroh and uh you know i i i know i'm aware of of the couple of things that he's like been in but i just i have not seen them so i have not this is the first thing i've seen him in and uh that i'm aware of and i thought he did a very good job yeah i would have thought this was my first time as well i guess he had a small role in shang chi Okay, um, I guess he played R- Ru Hua Chen, but like sure. I don't, w- neither of us remember that. This is our first real, yeah, you know, introduction to him, and I think he's amazing. Like yeah. his Prince Zuko is, he plays the layers very well. Um, I feel yeah. like in the the original, he might even do, do that a little bit better than the voice actor, uh, because there is a lot of yelling that takes place in the beginning of the first mm-hmm. series. And this guy, it, it you can see the the frustration a little bit more, and you know that might is that's just the gap between the voice and the animation, I'm sure. But right, uh, it, it felt like more like a real person. Yeah, you also get a good sense of that that childish growth, Gambino. like a misunderstanding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, not the childish Gambino, but like it, with the voice actor, you know, it's like I don't, uh, I guess I could look it up real quick, but I don't think. Yeah, Dante Bosco was playing Zuko in the animation. I'm pretty sure he wasn't a kid when he was doing right. the voice sure. in 2005. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's like you, here you you get – because, like, this is a, a young man, like, in his teen, teen years sure. still, like a young teenage boy who has been banned from his homeland by his own father who physically hurt him. Yeah. Like left a scar on his face, and, and he's been banished from everything he knew, and from his this like he was royalty, he was a yeah. prince. Yeah, like I'm sure life he's... for him was still hard, but he grew up with a lot of benefits that the Fire Nation people most likely did not see. Yeah, he's supposed to be next in line. Yeah, exactly. And now he's forced to just wander as like a hermit kind of thing until he can find the Avatar and bring him back to the right. Fire Nation. <laughs> and it's just like there's there's a lot of weight and responsibility and pain and everything that yeah. like I'm not going to say Dante Busco and the animation didn't do that like that Zuko is amazing but I do think Dallas Liu brings a lot of that childish like rage yeah and and just complete not understanding what's going on around him because yeah. it's just too big of a a pain to understand for someone that young yeah exactly so speaking of next in line Sokka up north in the Northern Water Tribe, it has taken over as the protector of the tribe while his father and all the warriors are away because he's the, <laughs> the oldest child there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Poor um, kid. Yeah. I, I There's think... a lot of weight. That is like, it's a Game of Thronesy kind of thing where yeah. it's just like all of these young kids are now the rulers. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, Ian uh, Owsley, he is playing Sokka in this. And I think they both found somebody who kind of looks like the animation (laughs) and honestly, uh, uh, gets the humor of the character. Like now I'm I'm not saying Mm -hmm. that the guy in the other, the other movie wasn't humorous. I don't remember, frankly, I don't remember either. That does bring me to avatar Aang because avatar Aang in the, in the animation is hilarious as fuck. Oh yeah. And that, that stupid movie that came out just, just super serious all the time. 
That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> uh, I think that Gordon Cormier was able to bring a good balance to uh that yeah there there were some good funny comedic moments with the character and i agree i just i feel like um and no offense to gordon i think he's great i enjoy his ang um but it's just there's a lot of the child that still seems to be missing like Mm. and and i don't know gordon Cormier is not that old i think it is because it's a child actor in a serious role sometimes it's hard to be both i don't even know what his age is it doesn't say it's crazy <laughs> so little is known of this young man he, he is young <laughs> however seeing him with hair is hilarious because i saw him on an interview where he had hair and i was just like what he has hair <laughs> i was just like he's not a bald child <laughs> Yeah, they already filmed all four seasons, so he grew back his hair. <laughs> <laughs> they did announce they did announce that it has been renewed and canceled for seasons two and three. So it will have two more seasons, and that is it. Okay. okay they good. they not only Netflix not only renewed it, but they also canceled it after season three. So they have two seasons to wrap it up, which well, makes sense because the original because animation was just three was. books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess there was. I just kind of figured they would try to to extend it to four seasons. But... Yeah, I guess there was a season four that was canceled, but the story was done, so it's all all good. Yeah, and it became the the Legend of Korra, which I have also not seen. Please don't kill me. The Legend of Korra is also good. After the first half of the first season. <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed to have a new one coming out soon i think like another the I third hope so that uh, an earthbender book. maybe maybe that would be cool yeah. earthbender mater a bird <laughs> yeah but no i i really appreciate both ian Owsley and uh gordon cormier i think they both do a great job in their roles yeah. there is a tiny bit of an elephant you and i outside of our podcast personalities uh-huh. here are both white individuals sure. so we won't talk about this one too much but there has been a um, question about Ian Owsley's, um, his, his agent's use of Ian Owsley's um, heritage to get the role. Mm. Um, the Cherokee Nations of America have all stated that the nation, the tribe that Ian Owsley is from, is not a recognized tribe by the Cherokee Nation. And, you oh. know, do your own research. I'm not going to say anything about it. As in the, as in the potatoes, that is. Sure, um, sure. I, I might do my yeah. own research as well. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's. I don't know. It, it, it's um, it's a Kentucky tribe. Let's find out. Hold on. I'll I'll do a tiny tiny bit of uh, the Southern Cherokee Nation of Kentucky is where um, his his heritage is tied to, um, and the I think it's four tribes of Cherokee in America. Like the nation of of Cherokee, um, it's on their list of fraudulent tribes. Oh, um, yeah. So there's some things to that. Whether that's his agent doing that, whether that's him doing that, I don't know. I don't know either. It could also be his great grandparents doing that you know exactly yeah there, there's so many different things i'm not gonna knock him because i do think his sokka is pretty damn good yeah he, he seemed to understand yeah. the character he seemed to get the assignment and he he fucking delivered and who also delivered is their katara hell yeah uh, played by and I, i'm so sorry i'm almost certainly gonna make butcher this name kia wintio i think you did it i think it could also be kia winchio maybe like the the it's t-i-i-o at the end it could it could flow um, i don't know i'm so sorry um but her as katara is great i think she does a great job at learning the the water bending stuff and at being ang's yeah teacher not his yeah his balancer kind of because it's like there's some things that you know he has the weight of the avatar on him when when shit goes bad he can enter what's called the avatar state which is when he becomes yeah. very scary yeah. and filled with power and if and he's killed in the that. avatar state you mentioned that the at the very beginning of the podcast you mentioned that people thought maybe the line of the airbender had or the avatar had been broken right that's if he's killed in the avatar state that would 
kill yeah. the Avatar. Yeah. Like, the the line's done for then. Yeah, because, and they explain it in the series, and I don't really feel like it's a spoiler. In that moment, he is calling on the experience of all of his past lives yeah. at the same time. So they're all... Yeah. Exi- all these different lives are existing at the same time and that's why they say it'll end the line yeah it's like that's the doctor who moment that's how he can access his past memories is if he's at a shrine of one of his other avatars he can also enter this state yeah. and speak to that yeah. old avatar the doctor can't do that though it- no the doctor well <laughs> technically the doctor can because that just happened in the jody whitaker series <laughs> Um, at the end, was she she accessed her own memories and talked to her past selves. That's true. Um, you know, That's true. a little bit on the Doctor Who corner here. <laughs> 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 I'll get there in my reviews. If you if you're interested, I'm posting my reviews to uh, Green Traveler Reviews dot blog. If you type in Green Traveler Reviews dot blog, you'll find my website. That's where I even have a, a review of The Last Airbender up as well. Um, so you're if you are interested in further, more specific opinions on the show, uh, especially the nitpicks, uh, because I got some nitpicks. I love you. So, so there was a big, there was another issue with Sokka that a lot of people were complaining about. I think it's a good change, and that is the live action has gotten rid of a lot of Sokka's sexism. Um, Animated Sokka is very sexist he's very much like you're a woman you can't do that i'm i am the man i have to lead in like the like, first season <laughs> exactly but he grows up right. that's the thing his character develops it's a very integral part of his character watching him develop from being this i'm the man of the tribe i have to lead i have to protect to becoming more understanding of people's abilities and and actually a good leader too and a good leader yeah yeah it's it's a fascinating development and people were really mad because because ian owsley came out and said he's like yeah they got rid of his sexism and people are like that's how this character grows up you know but i but i think in the live action i think he still has a lot of growth to be making sure oh 100 percent uh, he's it, just taken away, taken away the more irritating. Yeah, the more problematic part, and, and I don't think there's a problem with that because honestly, uh, people who intend to grow into being men need good examples of how to treat yeah. people. And thinking that you're better at doing something just because of of what's between your right. legs, that's not that's yeah. not conducive to good relationships even if he was sexist he would definitely develop into a better person (laughs) right but still having like that first season of a very sexist character who's also very funny and likable yeah Yeah. that sets that bad precedent yeah it makes it seem like it's cool yeah exactly but at the same time i I really enjoy animated i'm not gonna knock animated Sokka. i think that's a great story and great development Mm -hmm. but for the people who have been who who've been mad about a lot of the stuff, who haven't watched the live action Avatar, but were mad that they were changing the characters like this, I think this is one that's for the best. You know, I think this is a very good character trait to get rid of because we don't really need it in this Sokka. He still has a lot of leadership growth to make, mm-hmm. and that's more important to focus on in these shorter series because it's it's eight episodes as opposed to twenty. Um, I know that the eight episodes are longer than all the episodes of animated Avatar, but you know it's still a shorter-ish season. They've got a lot of ground to cover in less time than the animated did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, definitely. And and there might be some people who say that the series suffers from that fact, but I think they did a very good job of being true to what the show is. It's still fun. While also telling a very serious plot about a war, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, it obviously, and genocide yeah, and, yeah, like yeah. it, I, it needs when it goes from being an anime, this I guess we shouldn't really call it anime. I don't know. It's an anime style to live action. Yeah. There, there's definitely 
a, a layer of seriousness that has to be painted on. Otherwise, it would just seem phony. It, it would draw you out of the seriousness a yeah. little too much. Yeah. But at the same time, Aang can be a little more childish and fun. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> and I think that it's just... I really think it's because he's he is so young and he did play the serious parts very well and he has some comedic timing i just think like he didn't feel necessarily free to be as silly and goofy one it probably wasn't written but i do want to mention one other side character who's very important to the last couple episodes and that's Princess Yue. Oh, yeah. Um, played by Amber Midthunder. And I just fucking love Amber Midthunder. So that's the main reason I wanted to bring it up. Pretty fucking badass name. Yeah, they were the main character in Prey. Oh, right. Yes. And oh, my God. They also yeah. play uh, one of the two carries in Legion. And I guess they're also in uh, Roswell, New Mexico, but I haven't seen that. But she's she's just great. I, you know, I feel like I wouldn't be able to watch that because I feel like the, the historical accuracy would just be all incorrect. I know, I know. But, you know, <laughs> what if they do get it right? And then, you know, then we can call them to tell them, hey, listen, there's a vital part that you're I missing. Feel like, and we can get two more yeah. characters on your show. Yeah. yeah, I feel like if they did get it right, we would have gotten phone calls from the government by now. Now. because it would have uh, been like how, how do they, they know, know so much you know how do they know yeah i'm, I'm just pretty sure it's it's i'm ho- at this correct. point because it, it's been a while since i've heard i'm kind of hoping that they lost our files and kind of forgot about it i mean this country's kind yeah. of been a shit fire for a little while so i think yeah, that's 2016 maybe maybe the orange guy burned some photos and stuff and <laughs> they just forgot about us <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do That'd be pretty sweet. Let's let's do closing statements before we actually do get in trouble because you know, freedom of speech is only kind of a thing. <laughs> Well, in my closing speech, I will I will mention one other cuz just because we mentioned the uh lost reunion, um Ken Lung plays Commander Zhao, oh, yeah. who is yeah. uh, a Fire Nation um, general commander. Well, I mean commander. It's his yes. title, I uh, guess. He becomes an admiral, at least in the animation, yeah, like he that. becomes an admiral, but maybe not yeah. in this. He's button heads all the time, though, with, uh, with Zuko. Um, they're both trying to find the Avatar to, to get honor. Well, Zhao has other reasons that, you know, become important throughout the season. But... Uh, he he was also in Lost. He played yes, uh, Miles. a character I can't remember the Miles. name. Miles, thank yeah. you. Oh my gosh, the the one who could possibly hear the dead and yeah. then Lost. Who knows? It was it was fun to, <laughs> to unpack that. There was also another guy. The um, I can't find him in the cast. I I already forget. But um, he was the the narrator narrator for the Dharma Initiative videotape training videos yes yeah he played one of the um uh the monks the sages Sages, yeah yeah, the monks the fire they were they were protecting the fire avatar one of the previous avatars shrine Uh, and when i saw him i was like man i recognize that voice it's such a familiar voice but i couldn't i couldn't place the face (laughs) <laughs> and then I looked it up and I was like, oh my god, oh it's god. a lost reunion. Blake was right. <laughs> There's another one. But no, in my closing statements, I think they did a great job. They were very loyal to the main cast. Um, I think, you know, from all the people we mentioned in the main cast, I think they all do a great job at taking the characters from the animation, adapting them to the live action in a way that makes sense and doesn't feel... You know, it, it's still funny, but it's not, as you mentioned, it's it's very serious stuff that's happening. Yeah. And so, like, they definitely bring that weight while still having good fun with it and, and enjoying this world. Um, the effects are great. I like a lot of the CGI. There are some issues, in my opinion, with the cinematography of the effects. Yeah. If you want the nitty gritty, it's in my review on Green Traveler Reviews blog. But I like, agree with some of that. I, I was I was complaining to you a lot about this. I was sending you a lot of videos about like, oh my god, this is so fucking annoying. When you're having a rain scene, or if you're out at sea, and a lot of movies do this, and so do a lot of TV shows, and it really just pisses me off. There's it, it. There's a moment where raindrops will fly on the camera, and it's to make it feel more wet. 
you know, it's make it feel like you're getting rained on. No, mm-hmm. nothing is going to take me out of the experience more than remembering that there is a glass screen between me and the fucking events that are going on. And that's all it does is it makes me realize, oh, yes, there is a camera here that's filming it all. And just buy a fucking deflector, put it on the front of your goddamn <laughs> camera, and you're fine. Like, they they build these things for a fucking reason. Yeah. And this is a multi-million dollar show. They could have afforded a couple fucking deflectors, especially since most of that yes. scene was CG fucking eye. And, and that's so it's like it's, it's no a choice. Point. And I know that you know that it was a choice that they made. But, f- okay, it's let me dumb. give you the argument why somebody might actually be more pulled in. And that is because that they are glasses wearers. And yes, I understand you are a glasses wearer. I yeah, but, my whole life. But I think that it, it it is like the same feeling of as if I were there that my glasses got wet. But for the people who yeah. don't wear glasses, yeah, I don't understand why they think that would even make them in feel my opinion, more even for involved. a glasses wearer, because once those once those raindrops hit the screen, you just take your glasses off, you wipe. You put them back on. Oh, there's still raindrops <laughs> on the screen. God damn it. It wasn't me. It was the... No, it, it, it just removes you. It makes you remember that you're watching something, which I understand. Obviously, you're always aware that you're just watching something. But sometimes you can get sucked into the story and be having yeah. a good time. Yeah. And that's just yeah. such a tiny technical detail that really just pisses me off because it shouldn't be there. I know it's wet. There's waves everywhere. The characters are wet. There's sounds of wetness. I don't need dew drops hitting the screen. It pisses me off. Okay. Um, but that is like, <laughs> that's the kind of effects that keep happening, though, is like when Katara has her water bending and she is showing this beautiful water bending orb, you know, it's like the effects look so good when she is in the shot with it, when her hands are in the yeah. shot with it. They, the CGI had a focused image to work with. And use that image to make the water ball. And then they cut to a shot of the the ball over a diffused background. <laughs> I know these are all like tiny nitpicks. Yeah. But it's just when they did that, the CGI water ball went from looking beautiful to looking like a piece of glass. <laughs> and it was because the CGI editor, the person who's making it, didn't know what the fuck it would be reflecting. There's nothing else in the shot for him to work yeah, with. That's true. And it might have been a completely different artist than that was working on the original one Probably. when Katara was with it. Probably. So it's a completely different water ball within two different shots that when you cut back and forth, it's just sloppy. And it's just like there's a lot of those small technical issues yeah, I agree. that even though it's good effects, really make those effects look crappy because it's just like there's there's weird editing or something and that's throughout this entire show. So even though I enjoyed the acting, even though I enjoyed the loyalness to the to the show, it's still only getting a three out of five because there's so much like smaller filmmaking decisions and stuff that I'm just like, why are you doing this? Like it's textbook to just remove yeah. that. Your your fifty minute episode goes down to forty five minutes because you save time, and it's better. <laughs> like I don't know, there's there's so many of these small decisions that just ruined this se- series for me, yeah. uh, not ruined, but like dragged it down. I that it's just like I wasn't enjoying it as much as I was wanting to enjoy it. Well, I'm so sorry. That's I know okay. that was a lot. Uh, I <laughs> I enjoyed it quite a bit, mostly because of nostalgia loyalty to the show from myself but also the this who the the creators of this show are pretty loyal to this story of what's going on and i really appreciated it and they got all the elements that i wanted to have in it i was just happy that they included keem boomy they could have just cut keem boomy out and it wouldn't have they could have and i kind of wish they would (laughs) have I'll wait for your closing statement to before I continue. <laughs> no, with my we're bitching. doing it right now, okay? You didn't like their King Bowie, <laughs> who did not like their played King by uh, Utkarsh Ambudkar, um, and I don't think it was because of his performance. I think is because what they chose to no. do story wise, which is a lot different than in the show, but yeah. for the sake of time, they also. In that same episode, like, did two other episodes that happened 
much farther down in the series. So I know, yeah, they really truncated a lot there. Yeah, and it was that episode felt a little mucky because of that. But like, so here's my. I'll try to be quick. Here's my issues with their King Boomy. Okay, and the animated King King Boomy is a loon. He's yes. crazy. He, he's yes. 112 years old. He's a little wonky, but he's still trying to teach the Avatar. Yeah, you know, he's trying to use this moment to show Aang that you know things have changed a lot yeah. and you can learn a lot but I'll, I'll still you know he tried to make it a teaching moment through a crazy path yeah because he's crazy yeah but there was still a good reason for it this king boomy he- literally just complains and whines because Aang left me <laughs> you left us when you were 12 we all died like it's 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 very i get it there was definitely a war that happened and like i understand that he could have thought that ang the avatar yeah. betrayed everybody by running away but like they took all of this like teacherliness out of this hilarious beautiful character because i love king boomy in the animation and they made him Me into too. a whiny fucking brat who became a king and he i can't yeah it was so I, frustrating i get why it's upsetting but i think that it was interesting to have the role reversed like since they were going to change it anyways i think it was interesting that it was ang teaching the lesson because yeah uh, th- this show does put a little bit more of a savior feel on Aang, but I think that's because in the show, they, the the other show rather, the animation, they had time to build up people's faith in Aang. Yeah. You want to know one more nitpick? Okay. Aang doesn't do anything other than airbending yeah, I in know. these eight episodes. I know. I, that did upset me. He's the me. fucking Avatar. Yeah, because like, what in the it's hell, like guys? freaking episode three that he's waterbending in the animated series. Yeah. yeah. Like, by the end of book one in the animation, he is adept at waterbending. He's not, like, masterful, but he is pretty darn good at yeah. waterbending. And pretty much a master at airbending by then. Like, he's really good yeah, at airbending. Yeah. He's still got a lot to this, learn, but he's, he's pretty yeah, solid. This... They make it pretty clear that he was a master at airbending before he even showed up. Because that's what the tattoos yeah. mean. Like, you get the tattoos for being a master. Yeah, yeah. But goddamn. Like, it, that was something that, like, we got to the end of You're it. Right. And I was like, you know, the, I, again, I, it sounds like I hated it. I know that all the complaints I've done make it sound like I hate it. People always mistake that. I am an opinionated little bitch. I have complaints <laughs> about things that I love. Read my reviews on Doctor Who. I'm going to complain about Doctor Who a lot if you want to do it. If, you, if you're interested, there's a lot of complaints to be had there. But that's because I love things. If I love things, I got things to say about it. I'm not going to you know, be like, that was great. I loved it. No, that's no fun for me, sure. um, especially in a show like this. Um, so I, I did enjoy the show a lot. But that was one thing that like once I turned it off and was like, well done, guys. Well done. Did Hank do anything other than airbending? <laughs> Isn't he the fucking Avatar? Uh, it was like it was an immediate just like yeah, what the that fuck? was like, weird. I don't I don't know that he did. He didn't. Anyhow, Not once. Uh, I give it a face and a half because nice. I did rather enjoy it. But you know there are some things that maybe if I wasn't so nostalgic, it would have just been a full face. But I I, I highly recommend it if you're a big fan of the show. I do think. There is enjoyment to have out of it. I have heard some fa- fan fans uh, not be super chill with it, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's got it's very mixed be reviews. Devices, I'm sure, but yeah. I liked it. That's the show. The overall, the overall critique though is, you know, even from the people who hate it, even from the fan fanboys who are just like, no, it was garbage. Still better than M Night Shyamalan's yeah. adaptation, though. <laughs> <laughs> poor m night oh uh, man well if, well if you're gonna do an entire movie based off of a beloved show maybe get the main character's name right you know <laughs> i know yeah like he's like <laughs> i wanted might be to, a little important he said and it was an interview that they had on nickelodeon he's like i wanted the, the names to sound more like they came from the asian cultures that they're trying to represent right it's like 
No, what you did is that you made his name Soka, and nobody likes that. <laughs> Why did you do <laughs> and that? And Ong. Yeah, and Katara. <laughs> Ong, I, I don't yeah. know. I, he might have kept Katara the same. I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, I understand where he's coming from because, again, it was a mo- mostly Americans who yeah. came up with the naming and everything. Sure. And, you know, it's like, sure, maybe they didn't know how to properly pronounce Asian names that they're taking. At the same time, those Asian names, like those pronunciations of the names, became beloved. Yeah, so <laughs> they're beloved characters. Even if they're not proper Asian pronunciation, it's maybe a fiction. You call them Aang and Sokka and yeah, Katara. You it's know, a what fiction. I mean? <laughs> it's fiction. <laughs> Stop complaining, him, right? <laughs> it's it like it's not even that. It's a fiction in set in in those cultures it's a it's a fantasy world it's a different world completely fantasy yeah exactly okay we this was supposed to be like a half an hour to 45 minutes so let's end the show (laughs) yeah we'll we'll do it i am the green traveler from gorge and i am the faceless leon Safe travels. I'm drawing it out now because now I feel like I was being rude. Uh, <laughs> safe travels and good night.